Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in my devlog series. So in the last episode, what I got to was I started the physics engine, but it never really got resolved correctly. I never finished doing the stuff that I need to do to make it work properly. So in this episode, what I'm going to be doing is fixing that and I want to enable multi-sampled anti-aliasing or MSAA. So that's just making lines that look pixelated, not pixelated. That's literally all that is. So I am going to try and get those two things done with the physics engine. I'm going to start with a 2D physics engine. That way I can get the concepts down really good. And that way I have a 2D engine working as part of my 3D engine if I ever want to do 2D stuff. And then I'm going to work on the 3D physics engine and get the things that weren't working correctly, working correctly. So uh, I'm going to show you what I have done with the 2D physics engine so far, and then I will take you along as I code the rest of this. All right, so this is some a little example of what I have done with the 2D physics so far. So I have a little character jumping around on the screen. And the way that you can tell he's on the ground, or the way that I can tell that he's on the ground, is actually through the use of these raycasts. So you'll notice that when I press the jump button, a little raycast appears right here. And you can see that raycast just sort of shooting out, and I can also control like the different directions and stuff. So let me bring one of these down so that we can actually play around with this. Okay, so if I'm over here, notice if I shot the raycast down, it would miss it. So I am also shooting raycast out to the left, and to the right just to make sure that we cover all the cases and this allows me to have a variable length jump so if i hold it down the whole time i get a high jump if i hold it down just for a little bit then i get a small jump which is pretty cool and so this is just like some simple raycast and of course i have some collision resolution going on here now this collision resolution is not anything super fancy in fact i'm just separating the boxes sort of like what i did in the game that we're building in the 2d game engine series I don't like this. I do want to um, make this better. So right now I do have it so that you can actually detect collisions between like rotated objects and stuff. So you'll notice that if I rotate this, I still get pixel perfect collision with my box and it just sort of pushes me off. And so I have the technology there to detect the collisions and to resolve them. I just need to add in rotations so that if I want this box to have rotation around the z-axis enabled, then having it like this would start to tip it and then it would fall off of this. And so I'm working on that, uh, going through another, a different book called Game Physics Cookbook. And this one's actually really good. Um, it actually does 3D physics with all the impulse resolution and stuff first. So I'm currently reading through that stuff. And once I get it done with the 3D, then I should be able to implement it for the 2D. I also did implement too, um, if I pull up the sprite render for this box, and I change the color of it real quick. I can move this up and I have Z indexing now, which means that if these two things don't collide, which I don't think they should. Yeah, so they don't collide because they're two static objects. I only check collisions between static and dynamic objects and dynamic versus dynamic objects. But basically I have this Z index value. So if I change this to negative one, <laughs> you'll notice that that one actually disappears. And so if I move it, wiggle it again, Okay, here we go. It seems like I got figured out. Um, it's still buggy, as you can see. So if I change the z-index, I'll bring this down to 0, negative 1, and then you'll notice it goes behind the other object. And so if I bring it back up, it goes up, and if I bring it down, it goes down. And that's really cool, because that means that we now have control over, we can dynamically change the z-index and everything, which means we can place objects in front of other objects and everything. So I have added that support to the 2D render, so it is a fully featured 2D render. Basically, you can make some pretty cool games in this at this point. But like I said, I want to improve this physics even more. And I want to improve this editor. It's still kind of crappy. And I need to add in always that I can add in components over here dynamically and everything. But yeah, I'm going to continue to work, read through the game physics cookbook. And I'll probably be working on 3D stuff for a while. And then I will update you guys with some of the 3D stuff. Hopefully have it working correctly this time, unlike last time. I'll update you guys in a bit.
Okay, so I think it is definitely time for an update and I am very happy with where I'm at right now. So what I've been working on this past week really is this giant class called Intersection Tester. And basically this is just a giant helper class to my physics system and it does all the heavy duty work of the physics. Well, most of the heavy duty work. So I have a bunch of classes of functions in here that all do specific things. You see, I have this point in primitive test suite and basically this will tell me if a point is in a sphere, if a point is in a box, on a plane, on a line, or on a ray, ray cast, or in a triangle. And those are like my main primitives. Then I have the next suite of functions, which is closest point. So this tells me the closest point to this point that lies on this sphere. This tells me the closest point to this point that lies on this box, and so on and so forth. And so basically this class is just a bunch of these functions that I use in my physics system to sort of uh, get these results for me very quickly and then I use these results to resolve collisions and everything like that and then you can also use these just to do ray casts and stuff like that in your physics engine now I was writing these by following along with the book that I'm reading and the book basically just gives you the code he explains it but you tend to gloss over it as you're reading because you're just like okay I just need to code this get this done and you don't really pay attention to what you're even writing so what I did to deepen my understanding about how each of these functions works is I made myself write a giant test suite for this class. Now, typically I am against testing game code. It's so fluid and changes so much that I really feel like there's no points other than assertions and stuff like that, than writing full blown unit tests. And it usually just isn't a good idea. But for this class, I thought it was a great idea because these are very static functions. This is never gonna change. Um, testing whether this line is intersecting the sphere will just be the same no matter what I do, right? That's very static. The implementation could change, but the end result should always be the same. So it makes sense to write a test suite for these. So what I did was I actually wrote a test suite and I have this intersection tester test. You'll notice the markdown for indicating that all of these functions are tests and I'm using JUnit to do my testing. So basically what I do is I set up a scenario where I know the result. I know what the result should be. And the way I know what the result should be is by working it out by hand. So I have set up a bunch of problems by hand. We'll see, I have a sphere here and I have three points. And then I basically work out whether or not they're in the sphere, uh, either visually or by actually doing the mathematics. Like this one, I do the mathematics to figure out what the closest points should be and everything. And so I just have a bunch of these that I've been working out uh, this helps me get really familiar with the math and it also confirms my suspicions on whether my functions are working the way they should be. So basically I set up this scenario. I say like, okay, here's a line that I have. I'm going to create it. Here's a point. Now assert true. This should be inside of this line. So it says point online should return true test two. So I know this point should be on this line. And then I do one point online should return false test one. So this point should not be on this line. And I have these for literally everything that I do and I do a few key test cases uh, where failure could easily happen and make sure that it is succeeding on each of those and so then I have like point on ray and then I also have uh, closest point to ray these are where it starts getting trickier because then I actually calculate points using my test suite and then I do it by hand and I make sure that the results are the same and yeah it's really deep in my understanding um, like I said normally I'm against test suites but it's actually been helpful in this case. And then what I do is I run it, you'll notice you might, it's like a green bar really quickly right here. And basically that tells me all my tests passed. If one of the tests fails, say I change this to 7.4, that's not gonna succeed because it's wrong. It will fail and tell me, hey, one of your tests failed and then I can click it, it takes me to here, lets me know, hey, there's something wrong with this test. Either your function broke or the test itself is broken. So that's good. And then I actually put these to use. So I have a few particles, they're really big particles, but a few particles. And you notice that they actually bounce off this box and everything. And let's make this a little bit more interesting too. So I'm gonna actually rotate that cube so that we get, whoops, wrong cube. So we get a little bit of bounce from different directions from these. And so you'll notice that they actually all bounce off correctly and then they fall onto the plane and they have some weird vibrations, but that's because I have just now implemented this and it's a naive implementation, but I'm really happy with it. This took me a week and a half 
okay, with the last book that I was reading, I spent several months going through his book and never got anything close to this. So I'm super happy with this very minimal result because it shows me, hey, this stuff is actually working and I'm getting close to the solution. So I should be converging on a fully featured physics system pretty soon here now. I will continue to work and then I'll update you guys once I have some more interesting stuff going on. All right, guys, I definitely think it's time for an update because I finally have physics working correctly. So if I run this simulation, you'll notice that the box tips over, lands on the ground, and all these cute or er, spheres are behaving the way you would expect them to. This took so long because the physics system is just so finicky. These equations are so delicate. If you mess up one small thing, everything just completely messes up. As an example, let me comment out this one line of code, okay? Just one line of code and watch what happens when I rerun this. Everything looks like it's behaving okay, and then all of a sudden these spheres start growing. Why is that? Well, that's because if you don't normalize these quaternions, and all of a sudden your transform matrix will begin to grow because of faulty multiplications and stuff inside of this model and you know the math is beyond me but yeah I've spent just hours upon hours looking for these tiny bugs that are literally just one line of code I'll give you one more example okay so if I go into my physics system and say you forget a negative which is you know that is something that's very easy to do so as I'm calculating the impulse which is right here and say I so happen to forget that negative one, and then I run this again, notice what happens. Well, that one flies all the way over there, and you can tell that is behaving in completely the wrong way. So, yeah, very, very finicky, but I am super happy with the results because it's finally all working correctly, which is all I've wanted. So... <laughs> Now that this is done, I'm going to get to work. Uh, I don't know if you can see this because of the YouTube compression, but these lines are kind of pixelated, and that's because I have no multi-sampled anti-aliasing. So what I am going to do next is just make sure that these lines are super smooth. So I'm going to go implement that. That should not take more than a day or two, and I'll update you guys once I get that done. All right, guys, so the multi-sampled anti-aliasing was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. It was literally like two lines of code added and then it was working because GILFW sort of natively supports it. I think I'm gonna change it in the future though because I'm currently rendering to a frame buffer, which means I could do post-processing and stuff. And so I think I'm gonna do it manually in the future just because 
it's cool. So yeah, I showed you instead this uh, little time lapse of me making this model for dominoes because I figured, hey, if I have physics working, I may as well have some dominoes fall over, right? And it actually looks pretty cool and works like you would expect dominoes to work. Once again, I am so happy with the physics and now the anti-aliasing too. So anti-aliasing is done smoother lines they still look kind of jagged to me which is why i think i might do it manually just to see if i can improve it anymore but yeah this has been a productive week we now have physics and that's pretty good and the next devlog what i think i'm going to be doing is well i know i'm going to be porting this to c i want to start switching over to c because i have been developing some low level memory managers and stuff like that and so yeah so you can see the physics kind of settles weird too. So I'm definitely not done with it. I am going to be working on this in the future and everything and adding stuff as I go along and everything. But it has been really cool and I'm so happy with how this turned out. If you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next devlog. Thanks. See you.